what's going on guys so i'm out at the uh the 2jz this is a gte 2jz gte so i'm out of the car i'm working more with my exhaust manifold and i'm trying to dial in the uh the, the rev 9 exhaust manifold getting that to match up um, other little things briefly that i've been working on i've been hammering out my transmission tunnel because the t56 is a lot larger than the w58 that was in the car so hammering out the transmission tunnel uh, adjusting my tilt and slave cylinder so that when it pushes on the McLeod RXT twin disc clutch fingers, it's it's got like a certain distance away from the fingers. So I'm dialing that in, and just taking a lot of time to measure all of that and make sure that it's all uh, everything is all the right measurement before I put the transmission on. Those two main things are what I'm working on, along with this exhaust manifold. I have videos on that stuff, so if you want to check out the that playlist that I have on the car, check out those things. Also, try to look at the progress bar if you want to jump through to different portions of this video. It makes it a little easier to, to jump through as, I, as I'm talking about different things. First of all, just jumping into this Rev9 exhaust manifold. I guess second of all, because I just did the first of all was me talking about other things with the car. So second of all, quality of the, the Rev9 exhaust manifold. So if you look at it, this is actually, so I got this off of eBay. This is actually a $500. It was the cheapest one I could find. I figured if I got it, then I could, I could uh, do whatever modifications need to be done to it, have, have a friend weld it, fix some stuff. But it's actually, it's a very, very, very thick stainless steel. I forget the, I'll have the the grade of stainless steel popping up. I think, it, yeah, it, I don't remember what it is, but it's a good grade of stainless steel and all the runners are eighth inch stainless steel and this flange is actually half inch stainless steel. So it's a pretty good build quality. I can take this off now because I'm finished with my grinding. Looking inside of it, you can't really, I don't know how well you can see inside of it, but the welds are good. The main problem that I've had with it is fitment. So this flange, this, this half inch stainless steel flange, it's beastly. It's, this thing is it's massive. It's half inch stainless steel. But the problem with that is the bolt holes do not line up. They're all a couple millimeters off. The only way that I could bolt it in was bolting it in without three studs when I initially put this on as I received it from eBay. I tried to elongate each one of these holes with my just my uh, my corded drill and just trying to like basically cut into it with the side of the drill bit. I tried to dremel, destroying my dremel bits, breaking my uh, my regular drill bit just trying to elongate each one of these holes. I gave it to a friend that has a drill press. He was trying to drill into it. He broke a couple bits just because like you're, you're trying to elongate a hole. You're trying to just widen a hole that's already there. So the bit has a tendency to try to walk into the hole. And when that happens, it bends the bit. And it tweaks it in a way to where it just snaps it in half. So that's the problem that we were running into and that's the reason why i slotted this the reason i'm elongating them is i was trying to shift the manifold up because underneath these two runners if you notice on this uh this runner it angles down this one goes out and almost immediately angles down this is the main one that bumps this uh this nut on the bottom so what i ended up doing after trying that trying with this stud and just trying different things what i ended up doing was buying this 30 millimeter millimeter long titanium bolt this is the one that i had more trouble with initially i was going to try just to to run the 10 studs and nuts and then the one bolt and leave this one on the bottom of this runner out but there's risk of that warping. Even though this is half inch stainless steel, there's still risk of it warping because of the distance between this one and this one, that's like six inches. There's, there's room for it to, to warp there. So I didn't want that. So what I ended up deciding to do was to go with that 30 millimeter long bolt. And I'll have a picture of it popping up. I have a picture that I kind of tried to take a picture of it when it was in place, but 30 millimeter long bolt. Uh, it's got a 12 millimeter six point head so the, the head of it is a lot smaller. The flange that it sits on is, I want to say it's about the diameter of what these 12 points are. So that even the flange itself is smaller. So it gives more room underneath these runners. But what I still have to do is I, I have to slide it on. I have to slide the entire exhaust manifold on kind of at an angle where the bottom of the manifold is actually bumping my engine mount. So I have to slide it on at an angle so that it, it clears that washer that's on the bolt and then pivot it up, put a stud in, put a washer on and then 
put a bolt on. I've got to find this washer. I'm not sure where it's at. It fell yesterday. I've been trying to find it. So they have a tendency to roll because somebody had the genius idea to make them round, which means that every time you drop them, they're going to roll away. But give me some square washers, man. I'll take some square washers. That way they won't roll away whenever you drop them. The stud was bumping the runner also. So what I did, I tried to order these, which they're grade two, which is a slightly less tensile strength than stainless steel. The Speed Factory is a better grade of titanium than um, it, most fasteners that you get are grade two. Grade two still has the corrosion resistance. It just doesn't have the, the tensile strength that stainless steel is capable of having. So what, if you want to try to find like the aircraft grade stuff, I think that's like grade five and up, but all titanium is not the same. I've heard people say that <laughs> just like, um, politely, I will say no, all titanium is not the same. It's, uh, it's all the same as far as corrosion resistance. This will go almost all the way into the head like that. So it sticks out as far as my washer and nut will, will go on. So this, is, so this is good. I actually liked this, but the problem is I still had that issue of it, of the, the nut. Even when it was on this, it would, it would bump, the, uh, bump the runners and I couldn't get the nut on this stud. Even if I tried to thread it in place while holding it, I'm basically having to thread, having to have my hand under here while I'm holding up the exhaust manifold, thread one in place, thread another one in place. Just, it's, it's almost impossible to get those because it's such a tight place to work in and doing it with the engine outside of the car, even that's difficult. Since I said these speed factories, they are 13 millimeter. Uh, one of the issues is when you look at this on the bottom, actually can't get the 12 point on the nut to tighten it up. So I've actually ordered a six point grade five titanium nut that will replace this 12 point one. That way I can easily tighten it and loosen it. Ideally, I would want to dent this really well, the runner is what I'm pointing to, so that I could get the uh, get the the wrench on because as it is obviously you can't put you can't put a uh, a six point wrench onto a 12 point uh, nut so that's not going to work so the idea that i had was to buy i'll have a picture of it popping up but it's basically it's a 30 millimeter long titanium bolt i got it on ebay it's the only one i could find that had the the small head because the head that's on that is it's a 12 millimeter head it's got a smaller flange on it, but it fits perfectly underneath this, uh, this exhaust manifold. I've elongated all of these holes underneath each one of these studs on the top so that the entire exhaust manifold can shift up. And that gives me a little more room on these two problematic ones that are, it's the third stud back on the bottom and the fourth stud back on the bottom for cylinders three and four. So if you weigh the, uh, weigh the, the positives and the negatives of this, like it's a little bit easier to put on, uh, but the disadvantages are you have bolts in place in a very difficult place to reach to, and you can't torque them. So it's been a little bit of a pain, but I, I feel like having two bolts in place with the bottom of the exhaust manifold slotted is a lot better than having no bolts, no studs in the bottom two, and like I said, the only reason I slotted these is because the drill press kept snapping, um, kept snapping bits and you kind of can't, I, I don't know what else to do. I even tried my jigsaw and this you know, is just thinking like, okay, this is going to kill my blade and it killed my blade. So I can't even really do a jigsaw on this without going through probably like 20 blades. Cause I did get a little cutting in before it stopped cutting because it destroyed my blade. But that's it with this exhaust manifold. So do I recommend getting this exhaust manifold? Yes, but there's a caveat. I would say yes if you know a welder or someone with a lot of metal cutting things or you're willing to spend money on all those extra metal cutting things because if you think about it and you weigh the costs, like if you have to buy an angle grinder, uh, a drill, a bunch of drill, drill bits, maybe a, a Dremel to try to cut this, it kind of raises the, the, the cost of what you would spend on an exhaust manifold. 
because you're buying materials, you're buying tools for it just to modify it to get it to fit your engine. So is it worth doing that or is it worth buying one of the thousand dollar plus ones that are the same quality but they're guaranteed to fit? I mean that's, I feel like that's up to you but what I would recommend is yeah like weigh your options carefully like should you spend a thousand dollars on one or a thousand dollars plus on one or should you buy the five hundred dollar one and just deal with the headaches of trying to get it to mount. When you weigh the advantages and the disadvantages if you're willing to accept the uh, the difficulties in trying to get this to mount, I do think it's it's very worth it. And it's also not very, it's not very attractive having all of these gaps in the top. If each one of these, each one of these flanges, if you want to attempt to elongate all the holes with, uh, with, a, uh, with a drill press, hopefully you have better luck than I, than I do on this, but uh, I, I still, I still recommend it. I stand by that. I think it's worth it. Five hundred dollars for a manifold that I had to like, basically, uh, cut and grind some metal off of. Yeah, it, it worked. So, after a bunch of headaches and cutting and grinding, it finally worked. So, but that's all for this video. Feel free to check out my other, other videos if you want to. I have, I have plenty on this, on this, uh, this engine so far. So, but yeah. But uh, that's it for this video though. Thanks a lot for watching guys, and as always, God bless.